We have here the case of Biggs Inc. versus Bangkakas, which deals with the principles on strikes. Biggs Inc. or Biggs operates a restaurant chain with headquarters in Naga City, Camarine Sur. Biggs Employees Union or the Union was formed by its employees and was granted a certificate of registration by the Department of Labor and Employment on January 30, 1996. Biggs claimed that on February 16, 1996, approximately 50 union members staged an illegal sit-down strike in its restaurant. Biggs stated that the union failed to file a notice of strike and conduct a strike vote. Biggs further stated that the union belatedly filed a notice of strike with the National Conciliation and Mediation Board on the same day of February 16, 1996 to cover up the illegality of the sit-down strike. Biggs also stated that it issued to the striking union members a memorandum which placed them under preventive suspension and required them to explain their actions within 24 hours from receipt of the same. Biggs claimed that on February 16, 1996, approximately 50 union members staged an illegal sit-down strike in its restaurant. Biggs stated that the union failed to file a notice of strike and conduct a strike vote. Biggs further stated that the union belatedly filed a notice of strike with the National Conciliation and Mediation Board on the same day of February 16, 1996 to cover up the illegality of the sit-down strike. Biggs also stated that it issued to the striking union members a memorandum which placed them under preventive suspension and required them to explain their actions within 24 hours from receipt of the same. Biggs claimed that since the union members did not comply with its order, it sent the said union members their employment termination letters on February 19, 1996. According to Biggs, it filed a complaint for illegal strike against the union members before the National Conciliation and Mediation Board. On the other hand, the union members accused Biggs of interfering with their union activities. They stated that in February 1996, Biggs asked them to withdraw their union membership under threat of losing their employment. They further stated that in the same month, Biggs dismissed two employees from service due to their union membership. They also stated that on February 16, 1996, the union president and other union members were prevented from entering Biggs' premises. According to the union members, they filed a notice of strike with the National Conciliation and Mediation Board on the same day of February 16, 1996. When they attempted to return to work on the next day, they were instructed to obtain their respective memoranda from the main office in Naga City. They discovered that the memoranda informed them of their suspension from work for participating in a sit-down strike. Some union members tried to talk with Biggs management, but they were told not to report for work the next day. The union members thus filed a complaint for unfair labor practices, illegal dismissal, and damages against Biggs before the National Conciliation and Mediation Board. The National Conciliation and Mediation Board consolidated the two complaints and conducted mediation proceedings. When mediation reached an impasse, the union went on strike on March 5, 1996. Biggs claimed that during the strike on March 5, 1996, the union members committed violence and disruptions, prevented ingress and egress of employees to and from its premises, stopped Biggs' vans from making deliveries, threw stones at the vans, injured the driver, damaged its vehicles and guardhouse, and discouraged people from going to Biggs' diner. The strike ceased when both parties agreed to compulsory arbitration. Were the strikes held on February 16, 1996 and March 5, 1996 illegal? The Supreme Court ruled that both strikes were illegal. The court discussed established principles as follows. A strike means any temporary stoppage of work by the concerted action of employees as a result of an industrial or labor dispute. The Labor Code of the Philippines and its implementing rules lay down the procedural requirements depending on the ground of the strike. The law and rules limit the grounds for a valid strike to number one, a bargaining deadlock in the course of collective bargaining, or number two, the conduct of unfair labor practices by the employer. Only a certified or duly recognized bargaining representative may declare a strike in the case of bargaining deadlock. However, in cases of unfair labor practices, the strike may be declared also by any legitimate labor organization. In both instances, the union must conduct a strike vote, which requires that the actual strike is approved by the majority of the total union membership in the bargaining unit concerned. The union is required to notify the regional branch of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board of the conduct of the strike vote at least 24 hours before the conduct of the voting. Thereafter, 
the union must furnish the National Conciliation and Mediation Board with the results of the voting at least seven days before the intended strike. Jurisprudence teaches that this seven-day period has been referred to as the seven-day strike ban or the seven-day waiting period, and such period is intended to give the National Conciliation and Mediation Board an opportunity to verify whether the projected strike really carries the imprimatur of the majority of the union members. In a strike due to bargaining deadlocks, the union must file a notice of strike with the regional branch of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board at least 30 days before the intended date of the strike and serve a copy of the notice on the employer. This is the so-called cooling off period when the parties may enter into compromise agreements to prevent the strike. In case of unfailable practice, the period of notice is shortened to 15 days in that the union must file a notice of strike with the regional branch of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board at least 15 days before the intended date of the strike. In case of union busting, the cooling off period does not apply and the union may immediately conduct the strike after the strike vote and after submitting the results thereof to the regional branch of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board at least seven days before the intended strike. According to the court, in a strike grounded on unfair labor practice, the following are the requirements. Number one, a strike declared by the duly certified bargaining agent or legitimate labor organization. Number two, the conduct of the strike vote in accordance with the notice and reportorial requirements to the National Conciliation and Mediation Board and subject to the seven-day waiting period. And number three, the notice of strike filed with the National Conciliation and Mediation Board and copy furnished to the employer subject to the 15-day cooling-off period. The court stated that in cases of union busting, the 15-day cooling-off period shall not apply. With regard to the first strike conducted by the union members on February 16, 1996, the court found substantial evidence proving that the union staged a sit-down strike. Specifically, the court considered the affidavits executed by certain BIGS employees deposing that the union members conducted a sit-down strike on February 16, 1996. These employees consistently narrated that in the morning of February 16, 1996, union members refused to do their jobs despite having directed to do so. The court further found that the union failed to file the requisite notice of strike and likewise failed to observe the cooling off period. According to the court, in an effort to legitimize the strike on February 16, 1996, the union filed a notice of strike on the same day. The court said that this cannot be considered as compliance with the requirement as the cooling off period is mandatory. The cooling off period is not merely a period during which the union and the employer must simply wait. The purpose of the cooling off period is to allow the parties to negotiate and seek a peaceful settlement of the dispute to prevent the actual conduct of the strike. In other words, the court said, there must be genuine efforts to amicably resolve the dispute. Moreover, the court found no proof that Biggs was guilty of unfair labor practices as defined under the Labor Code of the Philippines to allow the union a non-certified bargaining agent to initiate the strike. Likewise, the court found that the union failed to prove the presence of union busting to exempt it from compliance with the cooling off period. The union did not present any substantial evidence to prove its allegations that union members were actually dismissed or threatened with dismissal for their union membership. For the court, the union's failure to comply with the mandatory requirements rendered the strike on February 16, 1996 illegal. With regard to the strike conducted on March 5, 1996, the court found that the union complied with the procedural requirements of a valid strike. However, it was established that the striking union members committed acts of violence, aggression, vandalism, and blockage of the free passage to and from Biggs premises. Specifically, the court considered an audio-video footage showing the union members' acts of violence, aggression, and prevention of ingress to and egress from the premises of Biggs. Furthermore, it considered the undisputed facts that the union members 1. formed a human barricade and prevented delivery vehicles from passing through Biggs gates 2. placed three big stones along the gate entrance to keep the vehicles from exiting the premises and 3. flung stones at another van while it was on its way out of the area. Said the court, while the law protects the right of workers to engage in concerted activities for the purpose of collective bargaining or to seek redress for unfair labor practices, this right must be exercised in accordance with the Labor Code of the Philippines, which prohibits any person engaged in picketing from committing any act of violence, coercion, or intimidation 
or obstruct the free ingress to or egress from the employer's premises for lawful purposes or obstruct public thoroughfares. For the court, the strike conducted on March 5, 1996 was illegal. Were the union officers and members validly dismissed? The court reiterated principles under the Labor Code of the Philippines in that for union members, what is required is that they knowingly participated in the commission of illegal acts during the strike for there to be sufficient ground for termination of employment. For union officers, however, it suffices that they knowingly participated in an illegal strike. In the present case, the court found that the union president not only knowingly participated, but also was the one who principally organized the two illegal strikes on February 16, 1996 and March 5, 1996. For the court, the dismissal of the union president as well as other union officers after the illegal strike on February 16, 1996, as well as the March 5, 1996 strike was valid. However, the court clarified that as to the union members who did not participate in any prohibited act during the strikes, their dismissal was invalid. Such employees were awarded separation pay as prayed for by Biggs. The court said that considering that 23 years have passed since the dismissal of the union members on February 19, 1996, and bearing in mind Biggs' manifestation that it could no longer trust the striking employees, especially as it is in the food service industry, separation pay may be more appropriate according to the court in lieu of reinstatement. The relief of back wages was, however, not awarded said employees, consistent with jurisprudence which dictates that back wages are not granted to dismissed employees who participated in an illegal strike even if they are later reinstated.